Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our side series on a technicality. Before we get in, if you just hit that like and subscribe button, we definitely appreciate it. What we're doing this week is we're trying to convert a Rev2 Hyper Neo Geo fighting motherboard to a driving motherboard by switching out the input-output sub-PCB. Unlike the MVS, these boards are not cross-compatible with every single game, so what we need to do is marry this I.O. board onto the motherboard as they are interchangeable. So taking a look at the Rev2 I.O. board versus the motherboard, we have a 5-pin harness on both sides, and that's bringing power as well as ground up from that sub-PCB into the actual motherboard. 5-pin to 5-pin, everything coming off the JAMA harness. So we take a look right here at the wires. We have 5, we have 2 red, 1 white, and 2 black, and those are going right into the motherboard. If we take a look at the driving I.O. board though, we have six pins versus five. So that harness is not going to marry up exactly. So we actually have to figure out what the pinout is. So what we're doing right now is we're just checking continuity on all the different pins so we can get a schematic map because I cannot find a schematic for the Rev1 driving motherboard. I just can't get scans that are clear enough to actually read. So as opposed to being able to work off a schematic, we're gonna have to build our own to see how all those signals are moving around the board. So when we hook it up, we don't fry it. So just taking a look here, we do see that we have two different leads going in there and that wire is connected to nothing but itself. So whatever signal's coming off the Rev2 JAMA IO board, it's not coming off the JAMA edge. I looked at every single pin on the edge just to be sure and that signal must be coming from somewhere else on the IO board and we will have to figure out where that's coming from and find it so we know exactly what we're doing with that. But taking a look at this little piece of paper here and we're talking about the motherboard pin out, pins four and five are going to be ground and we're just going to mark those with the G right there so we know. Pin 3, I have absolutely no idea what that is yet. It is a complete mystery to me. Pin 2 is going to be a 5 volt line coming from the JAMA edge going directly into the motherboard. So we know that that is 5 volt. And pin 1, once again, we still have not found that yet. So now we at least have a pin out of what's going from the I.O. board to the motherboard. So we know what signals need to move from the JAMA edge up through that motherboard to connect it properly. So taking a look at the driver's I.O. board, that six pin setup, the first thing we're gonna do is make sure we have continuity on ground on the edge, and then we're gonna to try to find it on this six pin harness. And what we're gonna discover is there is no ground on that six pin setup. So ground is not coming from the JAMA edge to those connectors. We need to find it. What we're gonna take a look at now is we're just gonna see what the other pins do, and we're gonna find out we're onto the five volt line is pin one and two on that edge as well as pin five are all going to be your five volt signal. So those need to pass up to the actual motherboard. And you will see as we continue to beep out, pin four, which is also gonna be five volts on the JAMA edge, also go to those exact same corresponding pins. There is no negative five signal and there is no 12 volt signal. So we're just dealing with a five volt signal going into the motherboard. So now taking a look at our pinout right now, we're gonna know that one and two on that IO board are going to be five volt lines, as well as the fifth pin. Pin three, pin four and pin six. I have absolutely no idea what they do right now. They must do something, we just don't know. So once again, we're gonna have to find those signals as well. But the interesting thing is there's absolutely no ground going through that six pin connector compared to the five pin connector on the Rev2 board where we do have two pins that are acting as ground. So the question is, how do we get ground up to the motherboard so that it is properly grounded out? So just taking a look right here at this board, we're gonna see, check one more time, there is no ground on those pins. So we go over all these connectors here and we do find that ground is moving around. My first thought was maybe the ground pins were broken on the board, but I do find ground on other parts of the motherboard. So we do know that that ground signal is not broken. So an easy tip for you guys and something I showed in an earlier episode on how to use alligator clips is I'm getting sick of having to deal with both probes. So I'm going to alligator clip my probe to ground. That way I can just work through with one hand free and I'll be able to position the board and you'll see ground goes everywhere. And that is a nice little tip just so you can actually work easier. So what we're doing now is we're just going to pin drag those two dual port connectors to see if we can find ground. And there it is. And what we actually discover on this dual port connector is there's four different instances in which the ground signal goes up into the motherboard because those two connectors go directly to the motherboard. So there is a path for ground to go all the way through. So it's possible that you actually don't need to ground out those pins into the motherboard on front because all those signal paths are being taken care of through that dual port connector. I'm not certain about that, but we do know now that that ground signal does have a path to travel up into the motherboard and that's good. 
So anytime I'm creating a schematic for myself, I make sure I take copious notes. And this happens sometimes when you can't find the proper schematic and you need to what I call beep out the paths. I just like to take notes and I'm showing you here, even though I just told you in the previous spot, that way if I ever have to come back to this project or if I have to let anybody know what else is going on, I can go back to my notes and I know that ground is four pins on the dual port IO connector. That way I just have the information at hand. Taking a look at two photos here of how that board is hooked up. They're not great photos, but they're useful. We're going to see that those two black ground leads go away from the connector on the IO board and out to the front of the PCB. Can't see it in the photo, but it's there. When we take a look at the second photo right here, we're going to see that those two red power leads also go away from that connector. And they hook up to a large JST connector on the front. SNK put that on there because they wanted to dissipate heat off the JAMA edge, so they gave you a second optional connector. You don't need it. I booted Rev1 boards without it. They work. Trust me. So here's our Rose Edge cart, and we're going to be putting that on the Rev2 motherboard. But before I switch the games, I do disconnect the power. It can't hurt, so just go ahead and do it. So the basic reason we need to do this project in the first place is that these boards are not cross-compatible. You can't put a driving game on a fighting motherboard and have it boot because you're going to get an error thrown. So that's why we actually need to deal with this in the first place. So we're just seating that card in there. I do own both driving games, but Rhodes Edge is much cheaper and it's readily available. Offbeat Racer is very rare, so we're not testing on that. Never test on your rare games. If you break it, you're going to be upset. And you'll see, we get a machine code error. You can't boot this game on that motherboard, so that's why we're switching the boards out in the first place. So taking a look at the bottom of the Hyper Neo Geo 64, we have all these different screws we need to take out to be able to get that I.O. board out. Through the magic of editing, I'm definitely going to speed it up, but I use a little cup just to put the screws in. That way I'm able to make sure I know where everything is. And then from there, I'll just separate the other screws from the actual PCB off to the side. And that way I'm not getting them mixed up because they are different sizes, and you do want to be careful of not putting their screws in the wrong spots. All we need to do now is disconnect that 5-pin connector from the I.O. board. That way everything will come right out of the enclosure and we'll be able to just set that aside and keep it protected while we're working on the rest of the project. Procedure for putting the I.O. board for the driver's motherboard back in is very simple. Line it up and push down. And then I just put four screws in the corners to keep it secure without putting it all back together. Easier that way. So now that the board is back together, we're going to come in and see that we have ground moving from the JAMA edge to pins 5 and 6, which are going to be our grounds. If we check pin 2, exact same story. So we have moved ground from the I.O. board into the motherboard without connecting anything. But taking a look at all the different pins for power, the two 5 volts, the negative 5 volt, and the 12 volt, we have absolutely no pass through from the JAMA edge to the board itself. So what we now know is, at a minimum, we need to move a 5 volt line up into the motherboard. Not worried about a 12 volt line, because that is not included on the Rev2 fighting board, so it's definitely not something we need to worry about. We know that pins 5, 1, and 2 on this are 5 volts, so that's what we're going to be working at. And if we take a look here, we will see pin 1 and 2 come from that front connector that's not necessary. So we now know we just need to move pin 5 up to the motherboard. So that's what we know. Ground goes from the IO board, 5 volt comes from the JAMA edge. So to confirm what line we need to connect 5 volts to, we come in and see on the Rev2 board, pin 4 is 5 volts, and if you trace that line up into the motherboard, connector we see that pin 2 is 5 volt now we know where the power is going so we're going to connect a little alligator clip to pin 2 and we're going to go ahead and just confirm that pin 5 is live for 5 volts we know that pin 1 and 2 are unnecessary because that's that front connector so we need to alligator clip pin 5 to pin 2 so we come in there and just pop that in that way we have a connection directly from pin 5 on the io board to pin 2 on the motherboard and i'm just going to drop these little cardboard pieces in here that way if anything shifts I can't ground 5 volts into somewhere it's not supposed to go. And now we're going to power test it without a game in, and absolutely nothing happens. But Magic Smoke doesn't come out either, and now we know that there is pass-through from power through the game cartridge. It won't boot without it. And here is it completely reversed. We have the RevTube board back on, and we know that what we've done has not caused any damage. I know I'm leaving you guys on a huge cliffhanger, but there are a few questions I have to answer for myself. I want to know why there's leads from the 6-pin driving I.O. board into the motherboard that I can't find the signals for. They're there for a reason and the photographs don't show me exactly where they're going, so I need to learn a little bit more about that. Kind of a measure twice, cut once approach so you don't toast your gear. Short of that, we'll be back in a couple weeks with the conclusion of this episode. Otherwise, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back on Tuesday on the mainline entry in the series, but have a great weekend. Bye-bye.